what's going on ladies and gents boys and girls guardians of all ages joker back again once again and today people today we are talking about king's fall quite possibly one of the best destiny raids of all time at least in most people's estimation at the time of recording i've cleared the raid multiple times with various different groups and i think i have a pretty good understanding of the raid however this won't be a guide these are just my first impressions my thoughts but we will talk about some of the mechanics so bringing king's fall over to destiny 2 from destiny 1 was of course going to have a couple of issues simply due to the changes between Destiny 1 and Destiny 2. Things like revive tokens. Golgoroth's totem, for example, in Destiny 1 would light up with a rune each time a member of your fire team died. That is no longer a mechanic in Destiny 2 because if all six members of your fire team die, you no longer have revive tokens and the raid is wiped anyways. So now the mechanic in Destiny 2 is, for every pull you miss, during the DPS phase a rune is added to the tablet. Get six runes, meaning you miss six pulls, and it's a wipe. Other changes include adding an unstoppable ogre that spawns during the totem section, and in what is quite possibly the most significant change, the streamlining of the platform jumping segments during the oryx and sister fights. Instead of all players needing to jump on specific plates in specific orders, you have a start plate and you have an end plate. The torn player will start at the start plate and make their way through the jumping puzzle to the end plate. Simple as that. All in all, Destiny 2's version of King's Fall is a more streamlined experience than Destiny 1's. Not necessarily easier per se, but more streamlined. But endgame content where you have to tolerate 5 other people that you got off an LFG for hours is only worth it if the loot incentive to play that activity is there. Don't get me wrong, an activity can be fun, but play that same activity a hundred times and it becomes a chore. So what incentive does King's Fall offer to keep playing King's Fall? The base set of armor returns from Destiny 1 with a handful of weapons. Unfortunately, not everything made the cut. The auto rifle, the shotgun, and the rocket launcher were all left in Destiny 1. Also, Bungie did not bring forward the Age of Triumph armor from Destiny 1, to seemingly everybody's disappointment. What is here is power creeping the game to the extreme. For example, Zoli's Bane. Back in Destiny 1, Zoli's Bane was a Void 110 hand cannon that was more or less worthless. In Destiny 2, however, Zoli's Bane is now a 140 solar hand cannon. That might not seem all that impressive, after all, how many 140 hand cannons do we need? However, Zoli's Bane can be rolled as essentially a legendary sunshot. And then there's Midna's Reckoning, the fusion rifle. Midna's Reckoning is in the highest damage tier of fusion rifles. That doesn't sound very exciting. It also gets Reservoir Burst. Again, nothing new. Tons of fusion rifles get Reservoir Bursts now. And lots of people may even argue if Reservoir Burst is even a decent perk. However, King's Fall weapons have an origin perk called Runneth Over. It's a straightforward and simple perk. It overflows your magazine when you reload next to allies. This means we now have a legendary fusion rifle that can get Reservoir Burst on six consecutive shots. Duma Chelchus is an all-around great scout rifle. Defiance of Yasmin has no less than three perks that will increase aim assistance and bullet magnetism, and so on and so forth. All the weapons here are reasonably strong meta picks for basically any activity you're doing. And to further add to how good all these weapons are, each and every one of them is craftable. You get one guaranteed red border a week, so if you're somebody who's big on not having their time wasted, this is perfect for you. The biggest change that'll likely cause the most controversy around King's Fall was the choice to make Touch of Malice an RNG drop instead of a quest item. But to be fair, Bungie does need some reason, with every weapon being craftable, for people to continue replaying the raid long after they've gotten all the basic loot. However, there is a missed opportunity here. With the release of the Duality Dungeon, Bungie introduced a sort of RNG bad luck exotic protection. By completing a handful of objectives, you could increase the likelihood that you would get the exotic from the Duality Dungeon to drop. Not including it here with Touch of Malice just seems like a missed opportunity. All in all, King's Fall is a great experience. It's streamlined in a way that makes it easier to teach and understand, while not feeling like it takes away from the difficulty of the experience. Is it easier than the Destiny 1 version? Well, of course, but I don't think that has anything to do with the streamlining and everything to do with the fact that we're just significantly more powerful in Destiny 2 and have way more tools in Destiny 2 than we did in Destiny 1. All the loot is pretty good, Touch of Malice not being a quest item is kind of disappointing, as is Bungie once again not bringing forward the Age of Triumph armor, something they will likely do at some point once they've brought forth all the old raids and they need a reason to freshen them up. That said, there is a lot of good loot here. Maybe a little too good, but that's an entire conversation about power creep that we don't need to get into here. That sounds like a future Joker problem. But hey, those are just my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Remember to like, but only if you did. Subscribe for more. Feel free to donate to my Patreon if you're feeling particularly generous. But above all else, stay frosty.